Okay. <laughs> Let's learn a little Nikon secret uh, from homie that's taken lenses apart for 20 years now. Um, recently, a company took apart the horrible Nikkor 105.14, which is bad on its output, but I, they pointed out the fact that Nikon has misleading advertising in the, the fact that it has a micro motor in it instead of a true ring ultrasonic. Now, some of the pseudo-intellectual, knuckle-dragging, unintelligent people on some of the photo forums were pointing out, well, those are nylon gears, and, you know, even in some helicopters, they use nylon gears. Actually, those are heavily reinforced nylon gears, and nylon is self-lubricating. Now, all those facts are true, but let me point out something to you. Let me have you repeat a sound, and then I'll tell you what that sound means. The sound is this. It's... Do you know what that sound is? That's the sound of um, autofocus gears is slipping in a lens that has been bumped, or say it was dropped on a carpet. You see, in a true ring ultrasonic lens from Nikon or from somebody else, that doesn't happen. It can't happen. Uh, I've actually even got a couple lenses like that. I just use them in manual focus mode because I got them really, really cheap and, uh, you know, cracking them open to replace it. It's no big deal. I mean, I got them for basically nothing. The lens is reported as being broken, but they still work. You can actually uh, still focus. Anyway, um, there are tons of lenses. I mean, I've had at least... 200 lenses that make that noise pass through my hands. You know what they all have in common? They all have in common. I want you to take a look at the image in the link below, and then you can see it for yourself. What happens is when it gets dropped, or what usually happens is it doesn't have to be dropped, is that uh, it will reach a point of high torque, and when someone goes to manually focus it, the second gear that matches up with the first gear on the micro motor, what it does is it sits on a pinion, and when that actually, uh, you apply too much torque to it, it bends it out of the way. So it still works, but not very reliably. So the gears are sitting like this, and when the autofocus goes to drive the lens, it makes a really fascinating noise. <laughs> That's exactly the sound that it makes. You ever heard that in a lens before? That's what's going on. Them be them plastic gears a slipping, which cannot happen in a ring ultrasonic motor. So there's all these uh, idiots that bought the horribly expensive, I mean, $2,200 main shot. You know, here's a fact. You know, everybody knows that I can't stand Sigma lenses. Hate them. Very poor quality manufacturer. Um, sample variation is bad. Reliability is horrible. Uh, their longevity um, is not good. Even in their uh, prime lenses, their expensive ones, even they have ring ultrasonic motors in uh, all of them, I believe. Even the horrible people at Sigma. You see, now Nikon, for $2,200, that lens made in China should have a ring ultrasonic motor in it, which I think their total cost would have been maybe like $20 or $25 more at, uh, at the production level to stick that in there. Yeah, you see, because there's nothing in there when you bump the lens or if you to drop it on the carpet or if you sit there and to manually focus it and there's a little bit too... There's a thin little pin that that second gear sits on and if it gets askew from being dropped or banged against a wall, what happens is, is that it gets torqued. And then what happens is it still works, but not all the time and not reliably so. And it makes a fascinating noise. <laughs> So there's the little secret. Pretty sure that Nikon for $2,200. Now people have said, well, you know, that lens, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have, it's only a prime lens. You know, the, the, the throw of focus on that lens is not that wide. It doesn't need a ring ultrasonic motor. You know, it does function quietly and efficiently the way it is. The question is, is that under any mild bump or like a three-foot drop onto a carpet, or a given a few years, how that will hold up? And the answer is, not as good as you would think. No, uh-uh. So while the people are correct in that the lens does work efficiently, it works correctly, and it is silent and fast, I mean, it's a portrait lens, it doesn't have to be really fast. The Ring Ultrasonics are faster. They are, they're faster. They're a very, very simplex design. But portrait lenses don't have to be fast. I mean, all of this is true. 
The point being is that it's a failure. It's a weak link that shouldn't even exist in that lens, especially not for $2,200. Could have spent $20 more, you know, on a $2,200 lens made in China, which with much, much, much less cheaper labor, you know, talking about some cheap labor in China versus Japan. Production costs, export taxes, all that stuff. China has the big advantage. It's not just on cheap labor. And there's export costs, there's the, the, the Chinese uh, currency is hyper manipulated, unlike the Japanese yen. There are a lot of advantages of making crap in China, except for cheap labor. A lot of advantages. Companies know this. The new Tamron, well not re new, but relatively new, 70 to 200, 2.8 VC. They were made in, J my version is made in Japan. Now they're made in China. Uh, I've heard no reports that the quality is any different. It's supposed to be the same production standards. I haven't verified that firsthand since I don't need another copy of it. But there be the facts. Yeah, repeat this sound after me. So all of those knuckleheads on the photo forums that are uh, stating things that are factually true are leaving out the big hole. You know? That's kind of like saying, well, you know, you could make a house out of cardboard and it works. It's like, yes, but for how long, girlfriend? For how long? And it's not very reliable, and it has other issues. So people will actually prop up things. It's like, you know, she's a really pretty girl. And it's like, you know, she is. The only problem is that she's got STDs, and uh, that's why she hasn't been on a date in five years. You know, she is drop-dead gorgeous. You're absolutely right. The only problem is is the, the, the undercarriage. Now... <laughs> This is the fallacies that people make. So there's the issue with that. Um, you know, some people will just only show you the good side of something. It's like, yes, yeah, this, this is awesome. Yeah, but this house is built right next to a dump. Or, hey, you know, this is great. Yeah, but the house is right underneath the power lines. Or, hey, this is great. It's like, yeah, this house is right next to the nuclear plant. You know? I'm here to actually point out the facts. That lens is no good. Uh, even the people that took the lens apart uh, were smacking Nikon around for saying it doesn't have gears in it. This Nikon's own words. It doesn't have gears in it. It does have gears in it. And I know what happens to those gears, especially the second larger one that sits on a thin little tiny pin, which is attached to a plate, which is uh, riveted into plastic. If that plate that that pin sits on actually becomes loose, just due to use, normal use of the lens, you know it gets bumped around, it comes loose, then what happens is that pin and, and therefore the gear become askew, and then the lens goes This is what happens when you know stuff that other people don't know. You're able to see things and predict things and know things and know how stuff works and know the failure points, know the design flaws. There we go. The more you know, the better. It used to be a commercial on TV. The more you know, well, which most people don't know that much. Thanks for watching. Bye.